Hey everyone, it's Elo. How are you doing today? Today I'm going to be demonstrating or giving a sort of how-to lesson on installing and using um, anchors. So if you don't know what these are, we'll talk about that. I'm going to give some tips and tricks that I've learned over the years, um, sort of doing it myself and learning. And I hope that this will be uh, relaxing and also very informative for you. And I do want to start off by saying that this isn't for men or women. This isn't uh, something that excludes anyone. Um, everyone can be good at this. It's not that hard and um, yeah I think it's a really uh, good skill to have and be able to carry with you to help decorate your home and uh, maybe in some other situations even uh, that you might need it so don't feel bad if you have no expertise or even practice when it comes to uh, home improvement type stuff. I actually have a lot of different like little how-to videos that I want to create that are all sort of domestically related, whether it's cooking or cleaning or uh, installing things. Um, I think over the years I've learned a lot and I want to be able to share that with you. So let's get started. Uh, this is an ASMR video, so I am going to be tapping and reading and doing some things that will lengthen the process, of course, so um, I'll try to make timestamps in the description box if you want to jump around at all. Uh, but, so, first things first, we need to actually talk about what an anchor is and what the goal here is. So, Often when you're decorating your house, um, sometimes you want to hang things on the wall that are heavy, um, awkward shaped, big things that hammer and nails and command strips just can't really take care of. Um, and you don't want your things to fall off of the wall. That's like a nightmare scenario that everyone is scared of. So you want to make sure that these things stay intact. Well, there is a product uh, that was invented to help with this sort of thing. So when you're installing floating shelves, mirrors, pictures, um, pieces of art, anything that you want to hang on the wall that's going to be heavy, even curtain rods. Um, you need to know how to do this. So it's a very handy skill um, and we're also going to talk about what happens if you mess up and how to remove all of these um, things if you move or decide to take the item down and want to change it. Okay, so the first thing that you need obviously is a motive. You need your whatever you're hanging. Um, and depending on what that is, the process might vary slightly, but these directions are going to be universal. So you have your heavy thing. Let's use the example of a shelf, uh, first and foremost, because I think that those are things that people are really scared to install and they're really simple. So the first thing that you want to do is figure out where you want your shelf. Um, mark that location. You can have someone or you can hold it up, take a picture. Um, with your phone timer if you don't have anyone to help you. If you do have someone to help you, have them hold the shelf up onto the wall and you look back, um, step back, and take a look and make sure that you like it. Okay? 
so you get a rough idea of where you want your shelf to be then you need to figure out where the hole should be so the anchor looks like this it can actually look a number of different ways um, anchors are usually of like the common thing between them is there'll be some sort of plasticky feeling um, specimen. They may have large ridges like this and look kind of like a screw at the top with like a spike at the end or they might not. They could be just a complete cylinder with no rough edges and that's fine too. Different anchors look different ways because they're meant to go into different types of um, surfaces. So, like, I think these ones can go into concrete, but some of the other ones that I've had can only go into, like, a wooden wall. Um, so, make sure that you check the pack for that factor when you're selecting your anchors at the store. also come with an equal number of screws, which you can use these for your installation or not. The good thing about using these is that you know that they're going to fit, but they also have to fit the hole um, of whatever you're screwing in. So if you're working with like a picture or a mirror, something that doesn't have, have to be um, exact, like you're not trying to get two holes aligned, you just need maybe one, um, that's a lot easier because you can kind of use whatever you want and it's not going to make a difference. But when you're dealing with like a shelf or something where you're going through a hole with the uh, screw to secure something to the wall, um, definitely you need to make sure that it's going to fit through those things on the inside once the screw breaks through the plastic. So generally speaking that's how it works. But how to make this happen? Um, so you're gonna find your spot. Next step is to make sure that you're, you need holes in the wall to hammer the anchors into before you use your screwdriver. It's a multi-step process, but it's really easy, I promise. Um, so, you need to figure out where to put your holes. I use a tried and true technique that is super easy. This is a little toothpaste tube from my dentist's office. Whenever I go get my teeth clean, I save these little travel toothpastes and I use them for minor construction work around the house. So all you need to do is get some toothpaste. It um, doesn't have to be a travel or from your dentist. Uh, just any toothpaste is fine, um, but you don't want to contaminate it if it's the one you're using in your teeth. So just think about that. Um, you can always squeeze some of your toothpaste out onto like a napkin and use your 
finger or a q-tip for the purposes that I'm about to say. So you're going to take some of your handy dandy toothpaste and put a glob of paste on the back of whatever you're fixing to the wall. Um, it might be the sort of metal frame to a shelf, it might be the whole picture, whatever. Wherever your screw is going to go, or screws are going to go, you want a big old glob of toothpaste, okay? And then you're going to hold steady and push your picture or shelf or whatever it is into the wall firmly and preferably at as level of an angle as you can. If you think you're gonna have issues with making it level, you might want to use a piece of string or something similar. Tack it to the wall, make sure it's level, and use it as a guide. Um, or use a ruler and a level to create a straight line as a guide. Either way, I kind of wing it um, just because I've done it so many times and I can eyeball most things pretty darn level actually. Um, so your toothpaste is going to smudge onto the wall and you're going to pull your whatever it is away cleanly without dragging it and you'll have toothpaste spots on the wall exactly where your holes should be. So then you can use that um, to move on to your next step. Sometimes you really do need to measure and measuring is so important, especially if you're hanging like curtain rods or something. Like when you're looking at your window, you wanna make sure you know where you want your uh, anchors for your curtain rod to go. Not the kind of anchors that we're dealing with, but the actual like um, sort of spindles that hold your curtain rod. Um, and those are not connected, they're two floating pieces. So sometimes you're like, how the heck am I gonna get these to be exactly level? Well, you can use the surroundings to help with that. Um, you can use the window frame and grab a measuring tape and measure from the siding of the window frame out and then use a pencil to make a mark where that spot is. So you can kind of triangulate corners and then if you have two windows and you need four hooks, you you know, the windows are going to be even or even-ish, even enough. Um, so you just need to measure out, make your marks and use that as a guide. Um, trust yourself. If you need to measure more than once, that's preferable uh, to messing it up, of course. Um, there's no shame in doing that either. So, you're going to have either your toothpaste marks or your pencil marks. Pencil marks, too, you can make little notes. Um, so, like, if you're hanging something really big and it has multiple pieces that might be the same, you can write, like, So if it is a bigger project like that where you might lose track, feel free because you can just erase um, the pencil right off of your paint and it will look like it never happened. Um, just don't use a pen or a marker, of course. Anyhow, now that you have your area sort of mapped out and you know you where you need your holes to be, um, this is kind of the fun but I guess the scariest part if there was a scary part. So, you're gonna need a power drill. Power drills come in varying sizes. They have different attachment capabilities, and most importantly, they have different power. So the motor that is going to spin your drill bit 
is going to depend on how powerful or, or the, the powerful element of your motor is going to uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, dictate, I guess, what how well your drill performs. So if you're just looking for a good drill, the uh, more they advertise the power of the drill. So this is a 20 volt, 1.5. I think this is, I don't want to say now because it might be wrong, but it's like ampere, amperes or something like that. Um, anyway, this is just what I have. It's a Black & Decker. This is like the, no offense to Black & Decker because this drill works perfectly. It, there's no problem with it, but it's kind of like on the lower end. It's not very expensive. Um, it's also not super heavy, um, at least not for me. It might be a few pounds. I don't think that's that bad. And it's got a battery pack on the bottom, um, which is rechargeable. You just plug it into a little um, charging station that goes right into the wall and all of this comes with the actual drill. So, obviously with the battery on, but just so I don't make a lot of noise. Um, once you have your drill, this is the sort of standard drill bit that it will probably come with, which this has a screwdriver attachment. So the Phillips head is the one with all of the multiple points. Okay, I think P Phillips, P points. A lot of the points, okay? That's your Phillips head screwdriver and that is what works uh, kind of best for most screws and definitely the kinds of screws that you'd be using with an anchor. The flat head side is still good for some screws, good for some nails, um, and some other things as well. So those are your two main screwdriver attachments. Okay, but we don't want those yet because we still have to make the hole in the wall. So on top of buying your drill, you may have to also buy a drill bit. So, your drill bits don't have to be from the same brand as your um, actual drill. I chose this, I think, because it was kind of the best deal and it gave me everything that I wanted. Okay. So, these are all the different uh, drill bits that come with this little kit here. It's little 
recycling in the drill, they can get really hot as they're cutting through whatever material um, you're screwing. So, especially the thinner ones, if they get too hot and you're misusing them or overusing them, they can snap and break, which is dangerous and also not fun because um, you might get a drill bit stuck in your hole that you're making. Um, and that's hard to get out unless you happen to also collect high-powered magnets, I guess. Um, so yeah, this is the whole little cute case, and it's good to have these um, because different sized things that you're hanging might require different sized anchors. Commonly, the one fourths drill bit. Is what's used um, for most things. So the anchor that I was holding up earlier, actually this is the size that the hole needs to be for that anchor to go in. And on the packaging, Um, packaging on the back, it will actually tell you um, how thick and how deep the hole should be approximately. And if you don't feel comfortable eyeballing it, uh, you can measure the length of your drill bit, just the part that has the actual bit tip. This part is all going to be secured in your drill. So measure the length of the bit tip, and then use that as a guide. Okay, so these were my all-purpose quarter-inch anchors. See, the quarter-inch, okay. They say that they hold up to 69 pounds and a half an inch of drywall, and up to 675 pounds in concrete block. Works in all types of materials. Or solid brick, tile over drywall, and more. Stronger than concrete screws in solid walls. And they actually have a picture here. I don't know if you can see it, probably. Um, where you can see the anchor splitting, like I was talking about earlier, and creating that nice hook behind the wall that keeps um, your items secure. So you're going to take your drill bit. Now, in the front of your drill, you have a rotating piece, okay? And on the inside, there are three little prongs that move based on the rotation of this front sort of nozzle, okay? So they get bigger or smaller to allow your drill bit. do cause wall damage, and like I said, we're going to talk about how to erase that wall damage when you're done, um, but also 
also you want to make sure that you're not screwing or you're not drilling these holes into really around any sort of like electrical or plumbing or wiring that you know of that's going through your house. Most places it's generally fine to drill. In all of my years, in all of my different dwellings that I've lived in, I have only once ever accidentally drilled somewhere that was a bad idea. Um, and it was fine. I just caulked it and it didn't make a difference. Um, but there was sort of like insulation that I hit in there, which is not a stable environment for an anchor. So if you do happen to accidentally drill into insulation, or if you drill and it feels kind of weird, and then when you go to put in your anchor, anchor's acting weird, or your screw's acting weird, you may be in some area of the wall that's not a good environment for your um, anchor and therefore might not actually support whatever you're hanging up. So try if you can to um, drill smart and if you need to you can use a stud finder or you can use the knocking on the wall method uh, to make sure that you're drilling into wood um, the actual studs of the house. When they say that, by the way, when they say that whole studs thing, it's really just to make sure that you're hitting one of the wooden beams in the wall that helps create the structure of your house. So they make these little machines. Like this, okay. Kind of looks like a mouse for other gamers out there. Prove me yet, so maybe I'll give this a, another chance at some point. Really, I've just been uh, completely winging it. Um, okay, so you have your spots. I guess you should have really looked for your studs and all that before uh, you marked your holes in the wall. Um, I forget that kind of thing to really mention. Just so you know, and I'll probably write out the directions um, in a comment or something. Uh, I don't know. But yeah, just make sure that you are drilling safely and not going to hurt yourself. Um, it's, in my experience, hard to make a mistake with the drilling. Um, okay, so you have your spots. You get your drill bit into your drill making sure that it's in the forward position you want to hold your drill very parallel, as parallel as you can, even if you have to turn the unit to the side or even upside down to get a good angle, just make sure it's straight, flat, okay? And then sort of push in gently and as, again, straight as you can. Don't let the drill sort of wobble as you apply pressure. Try to make it as head-on as possible. Okay, and then you'll drill 
into the wall and you'll pull the drill back out and it'll leave a sizable hole um, it might look like a bigger hole than you were anticipating and that's okay it's perfectly correct so I generally drill all my holes at once and maybe as I go along I'll tap in the anchor so once you have that big hole just grab your anchor hammer anchor flat you want this to be flush with the wall you don't want it sticking out of the wall at all if it is and you're having trouble getting it in try drilling your hole uh, a little bit deeper maybe if that doesn't help again you may be in an area of the wall that's not good for an anchor okay so you tap this in hopefully they all go in without a hitch they're flat against the wall next step is to um, apply your screws and this step is going to vary again um, because if you have something that you're screwing that you need to be like a piece of metal or something that's an eyelet that needs to be in between the wall and the screw um, not like you're just putting up a screw to hang a picture wire on or something you definitely need to be able to hold the object up at the same time usually I've been able to hold everything up by myself it's awkward and it's uncomfortable but it's not terrible and uh, you can just kind of make it up as you go it's really they make these things seem really difficult but they're not that hard um, so you get your anchor in and then you're going to change your drill bit so you're gonna take this and this is why I like to um, do my holes my anchor holes all at once it's because you have to switch this out so if you switch out your drill bit early then you're just gonna have to keep going back and forth between the screwdriver and the quarter inch and that's gonna be really obnoxious and um, I should also warn you that this is fairly messy the wall that you're cutting up with that drill bit shreds into like a fine white powder um, and not a fun kind it is a really obnoxious substance that doesn't taste good and powders and floats very easily so you may want to keep your vacuum on hand just to like suck up debris um, as you're kind of going along or just do one big very meticulous um, vacuum after you're done you also might want to wear some protective uh, eyewear um, I usually just wear my glasses but I also have these nice sexy goggles which bring us all back to like chemistry or like I don't know high school lab or something Anyway, they don't look great, but um, they're very helpful for keeping debris out of your eyes. Um, and I have these for a number of reasons. You know, sometimes you're doing yard work or um, some other kind of project, and it's really important sometimes to have eye protection, even if it seems really stupid. So if you wear glasses, usually that helps, but if you're drilling overhead, you really want something with like a visor on the top that's going to protect from things that are falling because getting that um, like drywall essentially in your eyes is really uncomfortable and it's worth looking silly for 10 minutes um, to not having irritated eyes for the rest of the day so as it may be I do have goggles and um, yeah so once you have your Phillips head little screwdriver back on here you'll plug it into your screw now if you've got a little bit of money to blow 
they make drillbit tips and handheld screwdrivers that are magnetic and that is so clutch if you're struggling to hold up the item this is not magnetic I'm just balancing it right now but um, the ones that are magnetic you can hold them parallel and even as you start to like move towards the wall and apply pressure the um, magnet will actually do a pretty good job of keeping it suctioned sort of to the drill tip which is so helpful um, I really wish that I had a magnetic drill bit tip but regardless you can get it done screw in your screws and you've done it that's the whole thing you might have to clean up if you haven't been cleaning up along the way but aside from that that's the whole gist of it but at the same time um none of us are perfect so i also want to talk about what to do if you make a mistake um, or if you are ready to take down the item and put up something different so with really small holes like from nails you can usually just use like a little squeeze of toothpaste as long as it's like similar to the wall color to sort of just swab into the hole and it becomes invisible to the eye but when you're making such large holes in your wall <laughs> You need something a little more than that and something that's gonna do a better job than that. So what you need is called caulk. just recently actually picked up this tube of caulk because I needed it I ran out and this is the first time I'm trying this style this is almost like a tube of toothpaste <laughs> and the caulks that I've used in the past are cylindrical and they're a bit longer um, and the packaging is harder and it's kind of like a hard tube a hard plastic tube and you put it into a caulk gun which is a section essentially a piece of uh, or a mechanism made out of metal that pushes with a depressor a metal depressor uh, the caulk out of the cylinder which is fine and it has a trigger so you can kind of like squeeze almost like you're using a hot glue gun or something but um, I wanted to try this because I like the idea that I can just use my own pressure to squeeze as much as I want um, I feel a little less in control with the caulk gun and maybe that's just because I'm smaller and they don't make ones for smaller people um, so this is a fast drying caulk that I got and it's kind of, well it says it's for windows, doors, and molding. Um, but it really, it works fine for this kind of thing. It's paintable, which is why I chose it. You can also get like clear caulk if you want to, or they make bright white and then they make like a cream kind of color. I think those are the only real options um, this is a white color so it's not gonna blend in with any of my walls um, it might blend in pretty well with the trim around my windows but that's about it um, so this is actually something that dries really fast and can be painted in like 20 minutes so if you are trying to cover up and you want it to be perfect looking relatively fast this is a good idea um, of course if your caulk 
looking something that's not white or not cream um, you're gonna need paint to cover back over what you caulk so all you have to do is squeeze this into the opening that you've made and pack it in there and I use my finger usually to just kind of wipe it um, flat this time though I actually bought this tap cap <laughs> which it was like two dollars and I was like why not because I use this kind of stuff so this actually has a little like caulking tool kind of built in to help scrape caulk flat in uh, like corners and stuff um, and it's also a cap for any of the dap brand um, caulks which is I bought a dap brand caulk so anyway I thought that was kind of cool um, but yeah just smooth the amount um, you don't want it to be like making a hole uh, because you're gonna this is you're essentially just filling in and then painting over I mean it's exactly what it sounds like um, and you want to make sure that it's nice and flush so that when you do paint over it you can't tell um, another thing is that you want to get caulk that doesn't show through when you paint sometimes if you are moving into a house or looking at an empty house that someone used to live in you'll notice kind of like shiny spots or like circular uh, kind of weird weirdness happening in the paint and that is usually because uh, the holes were caulked with a non like paintable caulk um, so it still shines through the paint so choose the one that's right for you. You might need to do a little bit of research depending on what your product project is But this is what's good for me um, So once you fill the hole and have it nice and level you let it dry and then you just touch it up with some paint um, Make it look like it never happened. It's really simple. You don't have to be very artsy uh, to make it work This is also exactly what you would do if you were moving or changing your wall paint color let's say you take everything down off your walls and you have all these nail holes and screw holes and anchor holes you're just gonna caulk them all up make them nice and flat and then when you go ahead and repaint um, again it will look like they never happened which is great uh, so that is the secret I guess to really out of place doing this stuff at first don't worry it's so rewarding to have these skills because then you can really add like elements to your living space that are more like a real kind of home I guess when you're only able to tack up like posters or really light things that can be held with tape or thin nails um, you do miss out on some of your opportunity to explore and decorate and just have a cool and also a functional space um, I've so many times installed shelves just for functionality and it's so 
helpful you can like customize your house um, in places that you really want it and need it and it's a lot of fun and shelves you can sometimes thrift you can sometimes find for cheap uh, same with mirrors and stuff you go to tag sales and you won't feel um, intimidated hopefully by these things anymore because you know how to install them and how to fix them if you make a mistake um, which is totally okay it happens um, and I've never actually lived somewhere where I've gotten in trouble for making a whole in the wall, that's kind of just something they say. I think you'd have to make a pretty big hole um, for them to really complain. So, I think I'm trying to think of all the projects that I've ever done and trying to see what would be my favorite, but it's so hard to say because I love doing like home improvement type stuff. Even if you don't think that you will, I would argue that you might. Um, I don't mean to like throw anyone under the bus, but I've actually never dated anyone who has been more like, handy, I guess, than I am. Not to, again, shade anyone or say that um, I'm great or anything, but just to say that these are like really undervalued skills and I think my natural instinct to decorate and nestle I guess and like make a home a home is what led me to learning these things um, it also probably helped that my dad's and his side of my dad and his side of the family are pretty engineeringly creative if that makes sense and they like to build things and I definitely got that same gene and my dad did teach me a thing or two um, growing up about different little tips and tricks and I used to love to like watch him he had a little workshop in the uh, basement and I loved watching him use the soldering gun and I still have it in a soldering gun for myself mainly because I don't have a need for one like maybe once or twice I've felt like oh I could really use a soldering gun right now but not enough to constitute buying one and learning how to use it so um maybe someday but yeah I have very fond memories of rooting around in the workshop and looking at all the different nails and screws and asking questions about how vice grips work and uh, I don't know what kind of hammer or screwdriver or tool I should use for a certain project um, it's just always been an interest of mine but no one I've ever really gotten close with not even just dated but even like friends I've never really had anyone else in my life who cares or tries to do these kinds of things <laughs> so I think it's undervalued information that not a lot of people are really actively trying and I wonder if that's because they think it might be hard um, I know money was a factor for me but for the amount of times that I've used my drill 
and all these other things uh, since I got them. They've, it's easily, like, the cost is down to pennies. Um, so they were worthwhile investments, and a lot of times you can get, like I said, hand-me-down tools, um, either from friends, family, you can ask if anyone has anything to give up, tag sales, and also, like, Goodwill and thrift stores often have stuff like this too um, for cheap that works just as good as if you bought it uh, brand new or someplace name brand. So, scout around, build your tool collection, and start getting comfortable with it because it's so much fun to uh, build and create around the house. Um, I have a lot of really fond memories. It's hard for me to just think of one and pick one good project or fun time that I've had trying to do like a new home improvement project. Um, so yeah, hopefully the pictures will be enough to kind of do it justice and sorry that I don't have any really good anecdote. Um, the one that comes to my mind the most is really personal to me. So share that and it's kind of all that's like on my brain right now so uh, yeah truthful moment kind of freezing up in what to uh, exemplify there but regardless I definitely have had some good good times and enjoyed the products of what I've been able to create most of all um, it just feels really good and my point of bringing up other people was saying that if I've had the opportunity to introduce them to home improvement type stuff and I think this is really why I brought up the dating thing rather than just like people in general because I don't I don't think I've ever tried to coerce one of my friends into doing something like this with me ever um, so that being the case, boyfriends or girlfriends or whomever, um, I have enjoyed doing it afterward, like, they get that same feeling, so even if you don't think you like doing this kind of stuff, you might actually enjoy it a lot more, um, than you would anticipate once you get it done, so... video.